Hey, Brandon. Hey, Alan. And welcome to Dice Over Everything, the Miniatures Gaming Podcast. So I think this is going to be lesson three in our Frostgrave series. Yes, lesson three of Frostgrave 101, getting into Frostgrave and getting up to speed. Uh huh. So, so I think this is going to be like college or university, but we're going to just combine <laughs> yes, all of parts course. of college and university into one thing, like the educational part right now, the drinking part right now, the Practical. Uh, the mindless gaming basically <laughs> right now every everything that college yeah. could be I would go just crack open a drink just all all jammed into all this right. podcast and i'm sure that will make it all better doing it all at once as opposed to, that could never go wrong right college should just be that way you just go to class and you crack open a drink um it can definitely go wrong but that's how it should be <laughs> okay just like in frost grave all right nothing will nothing will go wrong with our college course as we <laughs> attempt to do all aspects at once so what is the lesson of today anyhow Professor All right, Aaron. so lesson three. Uh, so the first lesson, we got a general intro, what Frostgrave is, what you probably want to buy, and the things you need to actually get into the game and get, yep. get the things on the table. The second uh, lesson was about the warbands and what kind of uh, all the different warband units you could take to, to accompany your wizard and apprentice. Yep, from, and, the, from the second edition book and the supplements. Mm -hmm. Yep. Past and and now we are on to the meat of the uh, lessons, which are all of the different wizard schools that you can choose. And yeah. we're going to basically be going through every single school, there are 10 of them, and give you a breakdown of these wizards and how you should go about starting them and what to look out for, what's good, what's, what's hot, what's not. Uh, we'll do the standard rating system of all the different spells. So the you can, tier list, yeah. Yeah, the tier list so that you can, uh, you know, argue about it <laughs> with, with us if you want to. Uh, yeah, so without further ado, I guess, you want to get into it? We've got a lot of stuff to cover. Sure, I guess because we have encyclopedic knowledge of this. We're going to do what encyclopedias yes. do and just go alphabetically. Not, not that anyone under like 30 would know what an encyclopedia even looks like. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's basically, you know, when you press the sort button and it's sort A to Z. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to start, do the sort, we're going to go through the schools uh, when you press sort A to Z and the, the, the button is, uh, and the arrow is down. Well, it's a good just thing so Frostgrave does that for just us. Just for young people. So. Yeah. And so the first mm -hmm. one is going to be the Chronomancer. Okay, so I guess we want to start off with the the spell tier of the Chronomancer school. Like, we'll get into sure. the other spells you could pick because they have because you have to pick basically for those who might not be as new to this. You have to pick three spells from your actual wizard school, then you pick mm -hmm. one from each of the three aligned schools, and then you pick two from the neutral ones. So you've got eight spells total. But how about we just start off by going with their own spell tier? So do we want to give a definition of how we're going to define these tiers? Like A to uh, B, sure. C, D? I guess first thing we should say what the Chronomancer is, just as a refresher. Although, if you want a detailed understanding, or not a detailed, a brief understanding of all the different schools, you should go to the lesson one. But the Chronomancer, uh, specifically, it's in the name. Uh, it is a time wizard. Uh-huh. Is I don't that a know. Good enough explanation. I don't know. I'm, we're going super theoretical here. Are we? Are we going for a history class too? Uh, we're not going for the mathematics just, uh, and the probabilities of how yeah, likely you are to read kill it. Everything. Well, if you wanted a little bit of history, apparently it's the youngest branch of magic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I'm Is that not, enough history? I'm, yeah, I'm finding it hard to care categorize like whether these spells all do exactly one thing. But they're, they're but spells yeah, seem as to be... a time writer... Oh, is it, did we say we're going to do a tier list, right? We're gonna yeah, we said we'd start um, with the tier list. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, so the tier list, let's just describe that before we go through the uh, spells. So every school has eight spells, right? And so we're going to categorize them uh, between the normal tier list things. So we're going to do the uh, classic S, 
Uh, S tier is basically, uh, this is one of the best spells in the entire game. Like, not just for that school, but overall, mm -hmm. when you see the spell, you are either going to love it when you use it, or you're going to hate it when it's used against you. Yeah, That's and, I, and not every wizard school has a top, an S tier. Yeah. Maybe half of them do. Yeah, uh, and then um, probably more than half. Mm -hmm. But uh, then we're going to go to A, and these are like uh, spells that you're definitely going to see and use. These are like the staple spells of that school. Yeah. Uh, so these are the top level of that school besides the fact, well, as long as, well, if they don't make it to being top of the entire game. Then we're going to go uh, B, and these are just generally good spells. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you will take them, but only if they kind of fit into your overall uh, wizard uh, idea of how you want to use the wizard. So these are not like must-have spells, like A tier or S tier, but yep. these are solid ones that could work with a game plan, depending on your entire spell list. Yeah, they're... Uh, mm -hmm. And then it's C tier, and C tier are spells that are really situational. Uh, these are spells that you probably uh, will not uh, necessarily start off with, but you might pick them up if you uh, get a grimoire later on in the game, just because you know you have a space for it, and it can kind of just give your wizard a larger breadth of situations that they can uh, interact with. And yeah. then the final one is D tier, and these spells just suck, and you will never, ever take them. And these are spells that probably need to get rewritten at some point, according to us, mm -hmm. uh, which means that you won't use them until uh, Fresh Grave 3rd edition. Yeah, or they can just get tossed away, because a few of those in yeah, the first exactly. edition got tossed away. Yeah, yeah. and so those spells, uh, basically, if your wizard, uh, the school has D tier spells, in our opinion, that basically means that they have my, one less spell than the other the other schools because those are dead spells. Yeah, and sometimes it doesn't even matter because they have such high tier spells. You're like, oh, you just pass it by. <laughs> they have lots of really good spells. It didn't even yeah. matter that there's Ds. You're just like, I was never even looking down there. Yeah, yeah. You'd think, yeah, with schools. Some of the schools that have D tier spells, you would think that that would make them a lot weaker. But some of the strongest spell, uh, strongest uh, schools have D tier spells. Yeah. So. Okay, so should we start with the A tiers, or should we start by alphabetically yet again and just throw them into a category? Yeah, you got to do it alphabetically. Otherwise, so that way you can you know, go back and forth and see where they've classified. Yeah. Okay, so we start off with Crumble. Sounds tasty. Is it good though? Yeah. So Crumble, uh, it is it, uh, just as a description. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a. Uh, line of sight uh, spell that requires a 10 casting uh, level. That means you have a, when you roll, you have to roll a 10 or up to actually get it off. Uh, and what it does is it basically makes holes in the terrain. So the main use in general is to create a hole in a wall so you can walk through it, or you can use it to auto-destroy opponent's walls because there's a spell called wall. Uh, or the funnest one is if someone is on a building on the second floor, you can create a hole uh, right underneath them, and then they have to make a test or they fall through the hole and take fall damage. Yeah. So, I don't know. My first reaction is that this fits solidly into the B category. Like, this is pure situational, but there are situations definitely out there, especially if you were playing with lots of maybe buildings and things end up inside the buildings or big walls that just being able to bypass that so you get to something a turn earlier. Anytime you can grab treasure a turn earlier, it's all good. So I think it's a solid situational B. I would say that would be more of a C for me. Really? Because, okay. yeah, so it's like, I would not, I don't really see Crumble as a spell that fits into a general game plan. It's really? more, it's even more situational for me in that, I would never take it as a starting list uh, entry, mm -hmm. but I would, like like our rating system says, right? Like, I don't mind picking it up afterwards and using it because there are certain situations where it becomes useful. But to me, this is one of those things you just pick up a grimoire and then you use it because, uh, let's say your opponents are always casting a wall or, you know, there's a lot of things you want to walk through. Mm -hmm. um, 
depending on the terrain or the missions that you're playing. Yep. But there is one kind of major issue with Crumble uh, relative to a lot of the other spells is that it's supposed to make a hole in a wall or it's supposed to make a hole in a building, right? Yep. Well, a lot of terrain that you use to play is like a you can't walk into it, right? Yeah, like there's I don't no. Know. So the issue is not necessarily that Crumble itself is as weak as it seems. Mm -hmm. The issue is, depending on your terrain, let's say you have a building, like a GW building, a lot of those buildings, there's nothing inside. You can't walk through the building. It's not or a lot of inside. a lot of the MDF terrain, too. Like, the fully yeah. modelable stuff's out there, but it's super expensive, and it's very most of it's yeah. not hollow. So according okay. to the rules, you're supposed to be able to walk, like create a hole and mm -hmm. then walk into that building and you can use stuff, right? But play-wise, most people will have a hard time uh, doing that, right? And yep. so that's why it makes it worse, not because the actual like con concept, it's just the way that the game is played for most people. It's not going to be as strong for, I think, a large number of people. However, if you have a lot of ruins, like one-sided ruin buildings, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to create holes in those, right? Because there's no place like you, where you where where it's entirely closed off on the board. So in that those type of games where you where you can actually use it, crumble becomes a lot more useful. I would still though put it on seer tier. Like I said, I don't think there's general game plans where you're gonna where you're going to take it and use it. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it when we get to one of the other spells that maybe they fit together. But oh, you got right. a combo! I got yeah, it. All so all the, all the combos. that's why you put it in B tier. Yes. Fair enough. All right, so going down the alphabet, I guess that brings us then to DK. All right, DK uh, is a line of sight uh, they, a spell with a casting cost of twelve or casting was it number of twelve. Yep. Uh, basically, you cast it on someone who has a weapon that is not magical, and uh, it breaks that weapon. Yeah. Is there a test they have to do? No. It no. Breaks it. Auto breaks it. Uh -huh. So this, so if you have, uh, if you have a weapon uh, and it auto breaks, uh, you get, you get minus two to fight and minus one to damage, or is it minus? It's minus Obviously, two damage. Obviously, we don't really cast daggers spell, are minus one. Otherwise, we would know this. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Yeah, it's minus. Daggers are minus one, so I'm going with barehanded is minus two. Sure. A lot of units still have daggers as backups, so you might even do this. It doesn't even do minus two. You, they just get a minus one. Because a lot of people with yeah. other hand weapons sometimes have a dagger, too. Or if they have two-handed weapons, sometimes they've got a dagger. So, I don't know. All right, let's, let's rate it, and then we can talk about the general uh, uses of this. Uh, so I guess you rated it first. So I'm going to rate it. Um, I think this is... Now, we haven't really used it, so mm -hmm. I'm going uh, off the cuff, right? Because, but I would say this is a little bit underrated by us, and I think this is mm -hmm. probably a B-tier spell. I think this is actually quite a decent spell. Mm. Um the, the biggest issue is it's a casting cost of 12, but when this is yeah. your actual school, 12 is quite attainable. So for other people, it becomes too high to cast, but for the actual Chronomancer, this is definitely uh, a usable spell uh, right. that you can fit into a lot of things. Now, how about you? Yeah, so my reaction from going through the other spells, if there's a, there's a lot better situational spells in the Chronomancer, and I think the Chronomancer has like a wide variety of like situational stuff, but this falls mm -hmm. below the tier of most of it. So and I don't give it a B. I put it at the category below and to see. Really? You yep. like crumble more than decay? Yeah, I said to get to that later. Why? All, All right. right. Okay, there's some crazy combo. Let me say, let me, make, let me make a little bit of a uh, spirited defense of decay. Uh, so I guess the one, the, the major thing is... Um, if they have a magic weapon, it's not going to work, right? And as the game goes on, people will have a lot more magic weapons. Yep. So that is an issue. But oftentimes, people will not have magic weapons. They'll have magic armor or something like that. And then their weapons are not going to be uh, magic. And the other thing is, if you decay, let's say, a crossbow, they can't use their range attack. They lose their range attack. And now hmm. they're just like a like a, like a like an archer or, or whatever is 
just kind of crappy at melee. So huh. without that that ranged weapon, they're not doing very good. Interesting. You don't need to kill them to take them out of the game. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of yeah. what the spells are are about affecting a model's usefulness. And yeah, if you shoot a crossbowman, yeah. you've basically taken them out. So interesting. interesting. And That's you a good don't one. have to roll for it. Yeah, so and they have no the... ability to fix it usually. Yeah, but I could yeah. see it being lower than that just because uh, magic weapons, like if you fight an enchanter, they can just magic the crossbow so that you can't destroy it. Yeah, so there is some hard can- harder counters for this. Yeah, and as you said throughout um, the game. You can also use it against um, some undead who have uh, close uh, combat weapons. So it's not just against... Uh, you know, your enemy warbands that is usable, although that's the usual thing. Yep. Uh, so it is more useful than other things. And of course, getting rid of a, a two-handed weapon to make them uh, have to use a knife or mm-hmm. just be barehanded, that's a big deal as well. It's minus three damage every time. Yep. Okay. All right. It's, it's an argument, but I'm still still going with there's other more fun spells. Okay. I could see. All right. All right. That brings us down then to fast act. All right. Fast Act is line of sight one with a, a casting number of eight. So this allows uh, you to immediately uh, activate a unit mm-hmm. uh, outside of their normal activation uh, during that phase. So let's say if your wizard casts it, then you can cast it someone who's far away that normally you couldn't uh, uh, command because they're mm-hmm. not within three. You could get them to activate first. Or uh, someone, apparently you can even cast it on a, a monster to get them to attack someone if they're already in melee, which is probably like the, the coolest thing to do. Hmm. And again, this doesn't require any kind of uh, will save. Yeah, so this is huge for like bringing treasure back, because often if you start going for treasure, it's kind of like close to your opponent, because that's you're often fighting like harder over the treasure that's halfway in between you two so you run up there and pick it up but they've got a guy who's about to come at you you want to get that guy back as close as you can to your front lines so that like Mm -hmm. if that guy who was coming for him keeps like chasing him he's now going to get swarmed by your whole war band and beaten down so this Mm -hmm. i think is like this is a very solid situational spell so i give it a b this is i can see this being used pretty frequently i was I think a B is about right. Yeah. I think I wouldn't say this is an always take spell, but the fact that it only costs uh, it's, its casting number is an eight. Yep. Kind of is really what helps it be much more useful, right? Like for exactly the situation you're talking about, mm-hmm. or often ta- like just getting people who are far away back into your lines before the opponent can swarm them. Yeah. Um. Now, oftentimes there's other spells that are probably better than that but there's another thing you can do is also cast it on like a for for escaping back you know there are spells that are better than that but this one is a little bit in some ways it is more versatile because you can also cast it on let's say a knight that you're Mm -hmm. afraid of getting uh swarmed or or stopped from attacking you someone else you can cast it on them or a barbarian and get them to move immediately and attack let's say your opponent's wizard or your opponent's apprentice before they can attack so I definitely mm. think uh, it is just just being able to attack, uh, to activate first while not being near a wizard, because usually a wizard's in the back line, right? You try uh, to keep is, them safe. I do. Is a decent kind of uh, a spell. But again, it has to fit into your overall game plan. It's not going to be uh, breaking your opponent's brains without some clever uh, warband and, and spell lists. So I'd say solid B. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe we agree on that one. That then brings us to Fleet Feet. Yes, Fleet Fleet, another line of sight one, and this is a uh, casting cost of 10. This one is a very, very simple but a classic spell. Uh, it just gives the target uh, two, uh, plus two move. Yeah, so your initial reaction it, to this very simple spell? Uh, I'd say this is amazing spell for movement. Uh, like so, movement is so powerful, right? And so, this is like you cast it, you set it, and forget it. This is a solid A for me. This is one of the best spells of the Chronomancer. Um, 
And it's just, you're never going to be sad about casting it on on someone, right? Because that, well, you might be sad if they die immediately after you cast it on them. That's exactly what happened <laughs> like this week in spells. our game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, so like a lot of bus spells, uh, you know, if you cast it on someone and then they immediately die, you'll be sad. But every turn that they activate, you're getting value, right? Because if they move, move, uh, you're getting three inches every every activation they have. And, so, and a lot of the time, especially when you grab treasure, that three inches is like the difference between getting to the treasure first and also getting away, right? Yeah. And also being able to run away from someone because normally, you know, pe- most people are six move, right? And then the, the other people, let's say uh, you have a thief, cha- uh, uh, sorry, a treasure hunter chasing you, move seven, and you have a guy that's six move, Mm-hmm. Suddenly, if you have give them two inches of movement, they're outpacing the treasure hunter, which is the normal top level. So this is a solid A, in my opinion. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's definitely A. And because of like, yeah, we're talking just within their school, but it's casting's fairly low too. So it's mm-hmm. just beyond what it does. It's casting makes it super attractive to start yeah. putting up with your apprentice. And might so be just, the best spell of their <clears throat> of the chronomancer. Yeah, even it's very simple, but it. I could agree it's probably the best spell. So I think this is what makes Crumble a very interesting option. If, as you said, the terrain that you guys, your particular group plays with, is conducive to just putting holes in thin walls. Uh Because it just, it synergizes so well with, like, rushing the treasure, rushing back. If you can, like, double down on that rushing by having to shorten the path, Mm -hmm. like, you make, you take your speed seven thief, you take your speed seven treasure hunter, and you put a hole through the wall. He's speed nine, his path is now super short to that treasure. Like, you've made it so easy to grab it and pull back and potentially even fast act him after he gets there. Like, these things all work so well together. So that's why I sort of saw Crumble as within all the spells as being, having, like, it just works very well together with Fleet Feet because you're probably going to have Fleet Feet. So I still think it's C, but that's fair. That's a, that's a good argument. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you could say it's C because so many people won't have the right train for it. So it's, I can easily see the argument for that on that previous spell. But yeah, absolutely A tier. All right. We can talk about it synergizing right. other spells later. Even yeah, as I said, like it synergizes with fast act really well too because you're trying to just yeah. get back. A lot of the chronomancer stuff works well together. Yeah. All, All right. right. We move Next on to one mm-hmm. petrify. This is a line of sight, uh, casting number of 10. Uh, the opponent has to, so you cast it, this is a casting on an enemy. So when you cast it on a enemy figure, uh, they have to make a will roll. Otherwise they lose their next, next activation. Well, they don't lose it. They just can't do any actions during their next activation. Yeah. So this is a huge issue, but it's, it, it only works on that specific uh, activation. So it's not like they're constantly losing um, the, the activations, but losing one can be a huge thing. And on top of that, they get minus three fight to a minimum of zero and cannot be let. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, what do you think of the spell? So I think this fits in still really well with the rest of the spell list. Like if you're trying to just snatch treasure, run away, petrifies... Stop people from chasing you? You just stop them from chasing you. I mean... Because often you've got shooting spells out there. You shoot someone, okay, sure, you take them down to five life. That's good. But they're still coming after the dude you want to get away the, with the treasure with. But this, mm-hmm. yeah, sure, you don't kill them. But if you have, like, backup guys coming, they're in danger, and they're not going to chase down your treasure, like, grabber. Yeah, they can't so. leap the guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, leap is a very, very strong movement spell yep. uh, that people use all the time. And leaping... Uh, not being able to leap the guy to chase after your after your, your unit is a great uh, move. Yeah. So, so sorry, what was your rating? They also get to they do roll their will against it, which huh? yeah, means you may not get it off because it's opposed. So I would just give it a B. Like it's it's not trash. Oh my god! If you didn't get to if you didn't roll a will, the spell would be broken. Yeah. Exactly. That's. that's <laughs> They cast it on their wizard, and their just wizard is now locked down. So, oh, uh, you can cast it on their wizard, yes. Nothing stops yeah. you from doing this. Yeah. But, yes. So uh, I would say I agree. Uh, I think this is a solid uh, B spell. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, for the exact same thing you're talking about. Uh, the minus three fight is also good, which means that you can slow them down so that they can't activate. Like, you cast it on night, 
and then you can take that turn to try to beat them down as well. So this is like a dual use spell, right? Yeah, because if you're in a fight, you know that one that one turn is mm -hmm. is where they are at zero fight or or one fight if it's a knight is a great is might maybe all you need to like get that knight, you know, dead or something yeah, or overcome them. Yeah, it's the type of spell you can consider like as an alternative to the shooting spells. Like, okay, sure, you're not going to mm -hmm. kill the yeah, guy, but you, you shoot someone on... and you take care of them at least briefly until yeah. you can deal with them. So. Yeah, fight is also for dodging shooting, so mm -hmm. you can cast it on someone from afar mm -hmm. and then do pin cut shooting. Very interesting, yeah. So this is a solid spell. I would say, depending on your other spells, uh, this this can be a great uh, entry in your repertoire. So definitely, I would say uh, solid B. I think this is high B, honestly. Yeah, like you were saying, you could probably build a list around this just based on shooting, where you pin cushion yeah. someone. Interesting. It's quite fun. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. The next one is uh -huh. Classic or Chronomancer. Slow. Similar to Petrify, this is uh, against a um, enemy, and it's line of sight of the casting uh, number of ten as well. Uh, basically, they the uh, the uh, target is reduced to one action for the next activation, but at the end of the round, uh, they test to, to make it go away. But it can keep going on like Petra. I'm oh, sorry, at the end of their activation. Mm -hmm. At the end of their, their next activation. So if you cast someone, if you cast slow on someone, they're definitely losing one action unless they've already reduced to one action. Yep. So I guess this is for me. I'd say similar to Petrify, I'd say this is a super solid spell. Again, like you said, this works with, with you know, casting things on people, slowing them down, getting your guys to go fast, to grab treasures, run away. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, making them not be able to chase you. Uh, so this, I'd say, is a solid B as well. Now, obviously, uh, one of the greatest things is they're definitely losing that one action, which is can often be, like... Depending on the situation, it can be very, very strong and powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and also, uh, this can, if you cast it on someone, they can continually, like every round they have, they get to test, but if they fail, they're just slowed forever, right? Which can be like backbreaking for a lot of, ca of characters, but uh, there's no negative to fight, unlike Petrify. Yeah. So even though there are, they're auto getting that kind of limit of, of moving, which is quite strong, right? Um, if if they have a knight and they just are within six inches, or if they they get leapt in, into one inch, even though they can't move an attack, that's often good enough to slow you down and kind of mess you up. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a balance that makes it B instead of like moving up to the A tier. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, no, I'd agree. It sort of competes with Petrify. Sometimes it's yeah. better, Both sometimes solid it's spells. worse. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all right. I think that's Both it. Both solid spells. I think that's an easy one to compare. All right. All right. So, so next we get Time Store. Yes. So these last two are actually similar, just like Petrify and Slow. Uh, time Store is self only, and it has a, a casting number of 14. Mm -hmm. Now, 14, I believe, is the second highest number you'll see for spells. Uh, that this, ba this basically makes it almost impossible for someone else to, another school, to use these spells. You're almost always only seeing Time Store and Time Walk with a Chronomancer. Yeah, it'd be super uh, unreliable. And this spell needs yeah, to be you, reliable, Or you just have to play a lot of games and reduce Time Store to, to get it to a useful spell. But if you're doing mm -hmm. that, why don't you just play a yeah, Chronomancer, that's, right? That's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Time Store uh, basically allows you to store one of your actions. So your wizard basically casts it on themselves uh, and doesn't move because they have to not use that second action. And if they succeed, then they that action gets stored. And that means in a future time, they can then, like a future round, they can not activate just, Not just next turn, time. but any future round? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's any future round, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like. Why is yep. our friend cheated? No, no, no. I read it. I think that's how I read it too. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so uh, this is a great spell. Using, being able to go off. So the biggest thing is that so you can- You said it's great. You basically spells. rated it then, haven't you? Oh yeah, it's A. Yeah, I think it's definitely go. solid A. Uh, now this spell does need to team up with other strong spells, but the biggest thing is your wizard moving and then casting two spells, which is such a huge swing. Mm -hmm. When you can apply spells like in the right spot at the right time, it just yeah. helps you do so much. Oh yeah, like I, I absolutely rate this a. Like I don't usually notice it happening as much, but I guess not as many people we've seen play Chronomancer. But just looking at this, yeah. and if you want to move, it's out, the same spell as the one mm -hmm. from uh, first edition. That's the that's the time we saw people playing it. Yeah. So. Even like when you move out with your wizard to cast stuff, you're kind of exposing your wizard to being retaliated against. If you're really worried about that, like say your opponent has tons of shooting, you move out, you cast your elemental ball into the middle That's of their right. army, and then you're like, well, maybe you don't have that. You're whatever. No, crap. because if you had elemental ball, you toss the first elemental ball out, then you toss the second <laughs> elemental ball out. That's yeah. That's definitely what you're doing. If yeah, you, you want to you just keep yes. going with it. Yeah. Okay. And th there you go. That's the combo that makes it so good. And even if you don't necessarily have elemental ball, if you have scrolls, mm -hmm. but casting two elemental balls or two powerful spells with scrolls, oh, so good. So powerful. Yeah. Just being and able you, to double up is, yeah. can be amazing. And you do it early in the game when things haven't gotten hot yet, and you just make your way up. Even later in the game, it's amazing. Or technically, yeah. you could also do just pick up treasure, just move through times, right? And the fact that you can store it for later mm -hmm. makes it so like useful. So you, you cast it at the beginning. Is that what you meant? Oh, you cast it at the beginning. And then later on, when you want, on the perfect time, that's when you use it and you, you cast all those spells. So I think the only cast small. spells and leave as well is another good thing. So I think the only small detraction about it is that the Chrono Master seems to want to like get guys going fast early in the game, like by casting Fleet Feet, by slowing people down. I think the Chrono Master has a lot they want to do beginning of the game, not later in the game, so that like. That's like, like every, a lot of, well, yeah. not every, but a lot of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that's, that's only right. a slight knock but against Time yeah. Store is great. It's kind of, besides Fleet Feet, it is, well, in some ways more than Fleet Feet, it is what makes a Chronomancer feel like a Chronomancer. Mm -hmm. So you either want to take Time Store or the last spell for the Chronomancers, which is Time Walk. So yeah. this is the alternative, in my opinion, to Time Store, because it also costs 14 to cast. So even as a Chrono Master, you're going to have to spend some levels to reduce it. Um, and you probably, I guess technically, if you play enough, you can take both and then reduce them both, but that's going to be tough. Um, so Time Walk uh, is similar to Time Store, uh, but instead of uh, storing an action, to be able to cast two spells, what it does is, so you, you can move, and it, it's all in one turn, right? So mm -hmm. you, so on the turn you cast it, your wizard or your your spellcaster uh, uses their spell, right? So they can move and cast the spell, and then they get to activate again during the uh, apprentice phase, and again during the so soldier phase. Yep. So, but they can only activate one action. Yep. Obviously, if they activate three times, this spell would be much stronger. But if you if you basically count it out, because they're using the spell to store this thing, they basically get two extra spells. Like, they can cast spells twice that turn. Yeah. But instead of casting them right away before your opponents have time to, to react, like Time Store, mm -hmm. you get to, you cast them, you know, progressively at different points in the turn. Yep. So you can't like move out double fireball them uh, like you could with Time Store because your opponent would then react right after you, stay, you see them uh, cast it. But you can still cast two spells. No, and the downside is that with Time Store, you've cast it on an earlier turn and you know you've got you know you're good to go. This, when you make that move out that turn, like say you walked out to do the things you want to do, and then you fail the cast on this, not, now nothing else is happening. You just you're buggered if it doesn't go off. So, I don't know. So, it's a, and it's a cast of 14, you, you too. You can so cast it's not, it, though, in the move, can't you? You could, yes. You could cast it in the move. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so actually, you, you can still so you do could, that. You could you not go still, all in, yeah, yeah. but it's not as guaranteed because yeah. you know before, a couple turns before, possibly. Did I say that? Yeah, so time walk, what what would you rate it? I would just rate a B. Like, it's... Really? Yeah, because time I think because time is store still exists. an A spell. I think time store and time walk. So the thing with time, time store is you're not actually gaining uh, casts, mm -hmm. right? Because you're using one to then cast two on another turn, but but that allows you to like store it and then do it later. Whereas time walk literally allows you every turn, well not every turn, every other turn, because so, uh, to cast mm -hmm. two spells, right? You get two spells instead of one spell. You're casting mm -hmm. twice as many spells. This is super strong. Okay, so I could see this being rated as an A if you intend to play out a whole campaign. Like if you intend to play out one of those 10 game campaigns and you're going to bring down the casting on this a little bit to maybe if you brought it down to an 11, that's pretty darn mm -hmm. reliable as far as spells go. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing a long and campaign... You're casting two spells every turn. Like, every, not every turn, because if you cast it two turns in a row, you take eight damage. Mm -hmm. So you can't... But you can still do it, technically. So, but like every other turn you're casting two spells, that's a lot more spells than the opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, but you are putting those, you know, you're, you are, like you said, you do have to put in uh, points to make it castable, right? Yeah. So I think this is actually an A. I would even say I like Time Walk more than Time Store. Mm -hmm. So I would say this is potentially better, I would say. Now, they're both good. Right? I think they're both A's. Mm -hmm. I would say actually Tom Walk is better just because you're getting more casts, right? Mm -hmm. All right, maybe my my want for risk in the game is lower than your that is true. Of risk. That is so true. That so the idea that they can react to you, right, before you get to cast your spells is a bigger deal. And you Fair can't enough. fully plan on it as well. Yep. So okay, that was the last spell of them. All right. All right, so I think... So they have a whole lot of situational being, ones, is yeah. what we've gotten into. Anyhow. Sorry? Yeah, so they, they have a whole lot of situational ones, is what kind of the synopsis yeah. is. So, Which is cool. And I think you're basically going to take Time Store, Time Walk, and Fleet Feed. Uh, so mm -hmm. do we want to go through then the other spells? So one of the things that is important to note with uh, Frostgrave is that the strength of a school is not just about their spells, because you actually are taking one spell from three of your line schools, which only have a minus two to cast. So you'll often, like a strong school will often have synergistic schools as their aligned spells that kind of help them work really well. Mm -hmm. So what are the aligned schools for Chronomancer? All right, I've made a chart here. So they have Soothsayer aligned, they have Elementus List aligned, and they have Necromancer aligned. Okay, those are all great, strong uh, schools. I think I might oh, yeah. end up saying that for every single, <laughs> uh, every single one, but yeah, they, actually, yeah. I, most of them, most of the schools have strong options uh, as secondary schools. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so do you want to go through what you would say is a good pairing for Chronomancer for these schools? All right, so with Soothsayer, I see Mind Control and Wizard Eye being my most tempting second options. One being because Mind Control is broken good, and like its casting is sort of high, but you need to roll high to take control of their mind because they're rolling opposed. So okay. just having Mind Control available to you, pretty cool. Wizard Eye has a casting of 8. And it brings down your so cast. It's 10. So it's, it's yeah. 10. So it's a really easy cast and it keeps you safe. So mm -hmm. if you don't feel like dying your first game or two, you know, maybe you get Wizard Eye in there. So those two I see as both solid choices. How they play yeah. into how you're going to play the game. I think if you go the shooting route, you're going to want that Wizard Eye. So. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Yeah, I would say, actually, the one I would say for Soothsayer, although we should be going alphabetically, but we're going reverse alphabetically for Aligned. Oh, whoops. Because this time, that's fine. If anyone's watching on YouTube, I've done a, a horrible chart. And if you uh -huh. rearrange it non-alphabetically, you can see how the spells actually kind of follow each other. And if you think of Magic the Gathering, where you have like red, blue, white, and whatever for Aligned, you can see mm -hmm. how they're actually next to each other in sort of a circle. Mm -hmm. 
Anyways, okay. that's how I followed it. All right, so for me, I'd say I also did think those are too good for Soothsayer. Mm -hmm. um, Wizard Eye, I think, is uh, my, probably my top spell, just because Wizard Eye is, when you're playing it with uh, one other person, and this is assuming that you get you know the normal seven, eight turns for a game, right? Oftentimes when we play, if we go to the store, sometimes the time gets tight because we're playing three or four person games. Wizard Eye is not as good because you're wasting one of your casts. Yeah. Uh, but, well, because you're, you're basically, you play cast Wizard Eye early and you're supposed to pay off later on, right? But if you don't have enough turns, it's not going to work out. Mm -hmm. But I think it just because it's also low, it's easy to cast. And because you're going to have to spend those uh, uh, levels to reduce time store or time walk, whichever mm -hmm. one you take, I think it's good to have uh, cheaper, easier to cast spells on the other ones. Um, that's why I would say mind control. I would. It's actually at the bottom of my suicide list, so it is up that you could possibly take. Now, mind control is a bonkers good spell. Yeah. Uh, it does what it says on the chin. It gets to mind control your opponent's uh, creatures. Uh, but just because it is so high to cast, and you need to spend uh, levels to reduce it. In my opinion, it, it there's too much fighting with the the uh, times the time store time walk. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't I would put it on the bottom. The other spell though that I would say is a good uh, spell to use is combat awareness because that spell just rocks. Uh, yes. Combat awareness is it's gonna be on fourteen one but... fight. Yeah, so it's still twelve. Right? So it is 14. It's still hard to cast. Yeah. But the, the reason why it is useful is because you're moving quickly with a Chronomancer, but you do need some guys to tie th people up and just hold the line when you need to, right? And mm -hmm. that is a great spell to use for it. So I would say yeah. Wizard would Eye is number one. Yep. Yeah. I'm just arguing. The other one I put in is Reveal Secret because mm -hmm. you can just cast that outside of, like, because it's outside of the game, even oh. if it's higher, like it's just good if it happens. Yeah, if that's it's free cast. Interesting. Yeah, you got a okay. free cast basically. All right, all right. We'll return right. to the the alphabetical order, I guess, and then bring <laughs> okay, us sure. bring us over to our aligned elementalists, to the Chronomancer. All right. So you said your list first, so I will do my my list then. For, uh, second. I don't I don't even so have my... a list. There's only one. All right. Uh, okay. Really. Yeah, sure, sure. I have three that I, I, I think are good. Oh, you're right. Wall? There is one down here, yeah. Yeah. So there's Wall. Now, Wall yeah. is one of, like, a really strong spell. It basically stops people from even moving through. It basically creates a wall. You know, the literal walls we're talking about, that you can cast a crumble to get through, mm -hmm. uh, it stops your opponent from going across the wall. Right? They have to climb up over the wall, which is, like, a full order of movement or something like that, or, or a lot of it, Mm -hmm. Most of, and, of your movement to come over it. And we talked about how the, the Chronomancer really relies upon just like getting treasure a little bit, mm -hmm. getting an edge on grabbing treasure faster. And yeah. if you wall against your opponent, I mean, you can't wall across the board exactly. though. So it's eh, it's harder to slow yeah, the guys so, coming after your dude down. But you have a decent amount of range, and mm -hmm. being able to wall and protect your guys when they move first to get it, get like back onto your side of the board and then you yep. wall up so that they can't follow you they can't even they don't have a line of sight either because the wall blocks line of sight so they can't even get at you and you can kind of make a good getaway with that so mm -hmm. great spell that i would say is generally number one overall yeah however there's a second one that i really really like or actually there's two other ones there's elemental shield just because it's a good spell low casting cost relatively speaking mm -hmm. and it protects your wizard from getting shot Yep. Uh, but I think we mentioned this already, is Elemental Ball. Elemental Ball is Fireball. Yeah, it's one of the most killy spells in the game, because <laughs> it hits and it hits guys yes. around that guy, too. So if you don't yes. succeed at your shooting attack, at the one guy you're hitting, yeah, maybe the guy next to him you succeed at. So I would rather, with Time Walk, this is amazing, because mm -hmm. this is the combo thing, right? So normally, if for a generalist, I might use Wall, but if you're taking a time walk or time store, sorry, and being able to cast double fireball, mm -hmm. I would rather put points into fireball than mind control. Because if you, you can't mind control two people, you can only mind well, control one person. And you so if I'm going to reduce the cost, I mm -hmm. would definitely do fireball. Well, yeah, because the cost gets the spell off with fireball. 
elemental ball. But with mind control, it just lowers the threshold for them to break it. So, yeah, yeah, those are yeah, those are the two I would go with as the elemental favorites. All right, so All right. bringing us to Necromancer. Necromancer has so many good ones. Yeah, we, we um, got we got to narrow it down though to what like nicely synergizes. Do you want me to start this one then? You started last sure. one. Sure. Sure. All right, so the synergistic ones I see are Ray Zombie. Oh, and actually, that's not even synergistic, sorry. Bones of the Earth is really synergistic. So, Bones of the Earth is another way of you slow the jerk who's trying to chase your guy down across the board. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the things where you don't have to roll opposed. You just have the hand come out, grab the dude's leg, and he's got to waste an activation kicking that thing off. And, and if he loses, there's damage, and he could lose a few times. So, I don't know. I see a lot of synergy with Bones of the Earth just reaching out and grabbing the guy who's coming after you. Do you, have, do you see, like, another synergistic one, or should I keep going? Um, no, you go through all of yours, because that's how we've been doing it. All right. The other one is Ray Zombie. It is only... It's on a 12 for Chronomancer, 10 plus 2. Mm-hmm. And it's out of game, so you don't have to waste... Like, you've got a lot to do during the game. Having like get an extra warband member without having to do anything in the game, so solid. Like zombie can pick up treasure, or they can oh. also just slowly shamble up and then intercept your opponent yeah. when they're chasing after your guys who are running away with the treasure. Yeah, it's it's out of game. So you're like, well, you have so many spells, you only have so much time. Like getting to do something before the game, I think really solid. And then my other one would be spell eater. Because sometimes you yep. play against people who have spells they put up, and you really would rather them not have them up. And yep. you really have to get rid of it, and you'll cut, like, you'll lose health. Even though you cast on a 14 as a Chronomancer, you're just like, mm-hmm. I'll take 7 damage to get rid of this. The game's over if I don't do this. So yeah. some, it's one of those things you sometimes need. So I... I put it yeah. on the list as a possible choice, and it's it's situational. Just because it's so versatile. Yeah. So spell leader basically dispels one spell, so one ongoing spell. Mm-hmm. So let's say someone cast mind control on your on one of your units, you can use spell leader to get rid of it. Yeah, because the guy could be about to move in and punch your wizard in the face, and you're like, this has to be removed. So. Yep. All right. Do you see any more that are worth considering, or are those like the top your top yes. three? Yes. Uh, no, I have. So I I did do Ray Zombie Spell Eater. I didn't really think about Bones of the Earth as one, but you're probably right. It is quite solid with the rest of the spells. The other two I chose were uh, Steel Cause, Health. Because let's say you picked your top three of Time Store, Time Walk, and Fleet Feet. Like mm-hmm. this, this gives you that way of slowing the opponent's guy down without you taking. Generally choose either time still or time walk but if you did both and you reduce them both you could cast three spells in a turn yeah well i thought you want to go mad if you decide to go completely mad like that but you should still like as a chronomancer you want that way once you've done all that of also slowing the guy down and you could do this before you start time doing all this craziness time walk is a three spell combo though because you want elemental ball time store time walk <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then you throw three fireballs yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe before you do that, like your guy's running off of the treasure, and you give him a little hand like two turns before by having the, mm-hmm. the hand grab that dude. So, so the the two that I, I chose were, <laughs> like, really the thing with Necromancer is that they have so many, like, useful spells. So it's really just all of their spells are, are not too hard to, ca- to cast if they're aligned, and they're just often useful. Mm-hmm. So the other two, besides Ray Zombie Spell Leader, and I guess technically Bones of the Earth, uh, I, I thought was Steel Health and Control Undead. So Steel Health is just a solid spell. It's a willpower uh, casting spell, but you just get to steal three health, so they lose three health and you gain three health. And that's just a solid spell. And it's also magical, so you can... Hmm. Although you can't do it on Undead. But the other one that's useful is uh, Control Undead, because there's so many undead in the game, and some of the most scary uh, monsters uh, early on in the game... Uh, are undead because they have immune to non-magical weapons and so it's often nice to have a control undead so you can just control them and send them at your opponent so just because they're so versatile for the general game i threw those in interesting yes if you didn't take elemental ball for some reason couldn't just shoot thing dead 
You can yeah. just control it, it and have it. Again, mm -hmm. it just depends on the other spells that you choose. All okay. right. And that leaves the last two spells that you will take, which are generally from all the other spells, and they will get a plus four to their casting number. Yeah, so, so what, what I, are the spells that you were thinking would be useful? So what I look for is like really low casting numbers on these. Yeah. Because they're not fitting into my main game plan. They're going to be really situational. So I'm looking at the... And you have like one, two... You have five different schools to choose from. So mm -hmm. some of them are going to have eight casting, which only puts you to a 12 with that plus four. So those are spells mm -hmm. I look to first. Sure. I don't, I don't want to think about this too hard. Like I've already put together this combo of a bunch of other things. I don't want to be relying on my allied schools for crazy combos. So sure. so going over to the Thaumaturge, who has two of these, I'm looking at Blinding Light or Heal. Because as you said before, okay. like yeah, Steel Health, getting health is always nice. And it's a casting of eight. Blinding Light, casting of eight. They're down to one activation. It synergizes really well with the Chronomancer trying to slow down people chasing you. I blinding Light right. by itself has a willpower. So the, the great thing oh, about yeah. Blinding Light is it makes their movement one. So you don't actually have to cast like Petrify or these other things. Mm -hmm. You literally just Blinding Light them, and they have movement of one, and they're not going to catch up with you. Yeah. Uh, so I think overall it's just a solid. It's one of those spells that is just solid. Mm -hmm. So but they do I'm, get a willpower roll. Yeah. I may admit that I didn't read these as well as I should have beforehand, but for my other one, I would want some uh -huh. out of game casting thing just because these you're not you only have so many turns to do stuff so having out of game stuff as these yeah. extra spells that are harder to cast always okay good. let's say say the one you're thinking about in one two three one right. two three animal right companion school. really would, oh you're right oh yeah. red squirrel is actually very strong you know what red squirrel is actually really good because you can do it on time walk Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of the game, if you get a right scroll and you cast Time Walk, that yep. means that if you fail your high number, you can actually cast it. Or your Fireball, if you choose it. You're right. You yeah. know what? Right scroll is probably better. All right. They're both about the same difficulty. And right scroll... You Animal Companion is just another broken spell. You get to take a bear as a normal troop. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And right scroll, That's you can fine. just start selling them off right for 20, good as well. 20 gold each, right? If you manage to get yeah. more. Yeah, but you probably wouldn't because you're, you're probably not to... going to. You're, no. you're probably going to just use those because because your your red scroll is twelve, so you need a sixteen. Yeah, you're not going to get that. Uh, so you're not getting that many, and that's mm -hmm. why I think Animal Companion has some benefits because you only have to roll that sixteen once, and then you get that bear. Mm -hmm. Right, you don't have to cast it every turn. Very true. That's quite good. But, um, all right, all right. Is that all of the things that you thought about? Yeah, so what, either one of those Thaumaturge ones and then something for out of game, either the animal or the... Sure. Mm -hmm. I got so. I got three other spells that I kind of like. They're all eight costers. All right. So uh, one is Leap. So Leap is, I think I mentioned this, is a great mm -hmm. movement spell. Uh, it moves 10... Uh, it allows a guy without treasure to move or to move 10 inches. Um, now, if he had already... Act if he hadn't activated yet, he loses his activations because he's too busy leaping. Yep. But this is just a general good spell overall to have. Um, and you can do a lot of different interesting things with Leap. Uh, even though there's a lot of movement stuff, just having mm -hmm. that extra movement tool uh, can be really useful. Uh, the other one I have is yeah. Hog. I'm just thinking about this. Like you have a speed seven guy, you speed him up to nine, he runs nine, then you leap him another ten at some dude. Hilarious. Yep, exactly. Absolutely hilarious. You can't attack, exactly. but he's stuck with you, so that's pretty well, cool. Well, you can, if, if he's movement 9, you're a treasure hunter. If he moves 9, then he moves half of that, 4.5, oh, yeah. then he leaps. Mm, even further. Nice. 13.5 plus another 10. And yep. you have your 1-inch grabbing range. Uh-huh. Yep. Almost the whole Great. board, usually for just grabbing yep. onto people. Cool. Exactly. So that's uh, really useful. Uh, just for comboing. Yeah, that, that uh, the could, other one that yeah. could push aside some of the thaumaturge spells of blinding light. Or yeah, I think so. I, you know, I wouldn't yeah. generally choose blinding light. I have that as a as an option, mm -hmm. but I really like Lee. Yeah. Uh, the other one, the other two that I have are uh, fog. So this is an alternative to wall. It mm -hmm. stops people from drawing line of sight. So it creates a fog wall, basically. So you so you stop in line of sight, and this can be really useful and helpful. But but fog can be cast anywhere, right? So it doesn't have to be close to the wizard. 
So oftentimes you can protect your guys that run quickly and also stop your opponent from, let's say, casting uh, mind control on them. or something or mind control. Mm -hmm. on them. Exactly. So this is just a great overall line of sight blocking spell, a great versatile spell that you want in your toolkit that can really help depending on what's going on in the board. Yep. And, you know, generally you're either going to choose wall or fog. Like you're not going to have both. But if you're if you're taking elemental ball as your elementalist spell, then having fog as a as a thing to cover up is really useful. Yeah. Also, if you take let's say you take your your time store, mm -hmm. you move your wizard, you cast two fireballs, and then your uh, apprentice casts fog. It helps protect your wizard from getting uh, screwed mm. over by uh, yeah, just just you know killing all of the guys with double enemy. Being shot them. back by crossbows. Yeah. Yeah. For, for uh, and then the there. final one that I like uh, is Push. Mm -hmm. So Push is an 8-cost spell that uh, when you cast it, you get a, make a plus 10 attack, but instead of uh, damaging them, you move them the difference in uh, inches. Mm -hmm. So you can really push guys really far away, like push them all the way back. And again, like we said, this can help your fast guys get to the treasure, get, get things, and get back, right? Yep. And then you push your opponent from actually catching up. So this is just another alternative to Blinding Light uh, or, or these other kind of spells, right? Uh, and there's all sorts of different cool things you can do. Like if you push a guy from the ground floor, who, if you push a guy who's on, if you're on the ground floor and, and your opponent or the guy is on the uh, on a second floor mm -hmm. and you push them, they actually go diagonally up in the air and then suffer fall damage. And that can often just kill them. <laughs> yeah, if you've got buildings with roofs and they're going to put archers on them and you know that's your opponent plays. Oh, so yeah. awesome. Because, yeah. mm -hmm. like, sometimes you can get pushed 10 inches in the air. That That's auto-death no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. So, cool. uh, great spell. Um, so, yeah, so <laughs> that, those are all the ones, including uh, the ones that you mentioned. And I didn't really think about those two. Those, those two, um, what do you call, uh, right scroll and uh, bones of the earth. Uh, I should have put those in. All right, so with that said, do you have a list of, like, an example uh, starting wizard list for a Chronomancer? No, but I would focus on the faster dudes, because mm -hmm. when if you're going to do something in Frostgrave... Oh, I meant, I meant the, are, mm -hmm. are you, you talking about going to Warband, or are you talking about your wizard, your actual spell list? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think I'd give the actual. Okay. I think I'd go Fleet Feet, Time Store, uh -huh. and then honestly, Crumble, because the terrain we play with, I want to just go sure. right through that wall, take that, and get That's out true. of there. A lot. Those are the three yeah. from there. Because we kept talking about Elemental Ball, I would feel hypocritical if I didn't just take that and be like, yeah, I'll <laughs> get double balls yeah. this. Yeah. That. And then probably Ray Zombie. Because I okay. just having a pal around, always cool. Because uh -huh. I just enjoy having more war band members to team up. And then probably mind control, because it's just so harsh, and your opponents just cringe whenever you cast okay. it. Okay, sure, love it. Yeah. And then after that, probably just the right scroll. And then what was the other one you mentioned was really good? Leap. Yep, leap. Yep. No, leap. Uh, probably leap just to keep doubling down on that guy who comes, goes through the wall, runs away really fast. You leap him back, and that, that middle treasure is yours. I want to triple sure. down. All right. I have uh, two different options, uh, and they're mostly the same, and then you swap with certain things. All right. So my first one is Fleet Feet, because it's awesome, it's, like you said. Mm -hmm. uh, time walk because I like that spell more. Like I said, uh, then I would choose uh, probably petrify yep. uh, as the third spell to help slow people down. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'd have wall, uh, steel, health as because I just like that spell to do a little bit of magical damage to to damage things. Uh, for the last one, I would possibly use wizard eye just to be able to cast all those things. Uh, separately. Yeah. Uh, and then my last two would be push and leap. So I can do the fleet feet, you know, leap thing. 
and then having the push is just a great spell. And mm-hmm. I love, you know, the idea of, you know, shooting people up and making them fall to the death. Yeah. The alternative to that would be swapping out uh, Time Walk for uh, Time Store, uh, then doing swapping out Wall for Elemental Ball, and then I would change Push for Fog. Yeah, the combo you talked about before. Yeah, exactly. Blast them with your wizard, and then cover up your wizard with the Fog so they can't retaliate. Yep, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so, so those too. are the two lists that I, I, I would like to do uh, first, mm-hmm. uh, if, I, if I start a Chronomancer. Um, last thing, I guess, is who are, or I guess second last thing, there's two mm-hmm. other things, but like who, um, what, what units do you think go well with the Chronomancer? So what warband members are you going to be recruiting? So because we talked about moving in, grabbing stuff, moving out, like really mm-hmm. early on, I want a bunch of speed seven soldiers, which may honestly mean just taking a bunch of thieves and never trying to fight with them. But that's kind of risky if they do manage to get to you. So also they get shot dead more easily. They, get, they fight just one. get shot dead if your fight's kind of low. But I mean, you only get a bit more fight when you get to the better level soldiers. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm almost looking towards like a ranger to begin with, because rangers are even good late game. So just get the ranger right away. It's got speed seven. Mm-hmm. So potentially you move up somewhere good. And I think at the beginning of the game, I, I honestly, you want guys to move in to stop them. Mm-hmm. So I might just be going with something like a Templar to move in, like yeah. later. To so, once so here's they try the thing and chase you, you're like, uh-huh. yeah, with fleet feet. Yeah. It instead of like making them uber fast, uh, it makes a Templar who's generally slow now as fast as a treasure hunter and Mm -hmm. that is scary as hell because just templar their biggest issue is that they take time to get there but they're the most deadly base unit in the game Mm -hmm. and then i think i would at the beginning rely on thieves to grab stuff rather than better soldiers i would go templar and treasure hunter i'm surprised you didn't mention treasure hunter i Uh, really love treasure hunter move seven fight three his fight uh, doesn't three, get yeah. a minus one for carrying treasure because they only have a hand weapon and a light weapon and a dagger. And it's got two more health and one more armor yeah. than a thief, so it's yeah. less likely to get one shot. If they do, just they get yeah. a good crossbow shot off into you. It's less yeah. likely to die. Too well, yeah. so it helps it resist some of the spells. It's just overall good, and I I like treasure hunters at the very end as well. Especially, I was going to say that. I, I see it as like that's what you want closer to the end. So. Mm-hmm. I'd actually would, rather take them than the ranger. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I would I would wait till the end personally. But other than that, and then, yeah, yeah, everything else I would say is just a taste. Yeah, yeah, for me because chronomancers, you know, can cast fleet feet, get people mm-hmm. moving faster, um, and especially if you take leap uh, as a support spell, mm-hmm. you're going to be very very fast. So I think you can take less ranged and more close combat stuff just to, to get up there that's why i would also consider combat awareness because it, you need that to make your close combat guys actually effective once they actually get into close combat yes it's also a choice yeah i think mm-hmm. i often take a lot of shooting but in a in a chronomancer i might cap that at two shooters hmm. I, I would even consider no shooters honestly mm-hmm. just have your shooting be the wizards and stuff Definitely, if you take fog, absolutely, you could just be like, no, you're... fireball. No, that's all the shooting you need. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh, all right. Uh, always... I guess the last. So yeah. It's always cool to finish the guys who got fireball down to like three health off, which is like pew, and then they're dead. That is true. So that I don't know. Two... I, I did have that as a point, but I ignored it. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely useful to to fo- to finish people off with those guys. Or... You could quadruple down now that you mention it. You're like fireball, fireball, pew pew pew, four arrows, yeah. and just, just shoot them dead. You don't. You're like they're like, oh, you're gonna do cool movement. You're like, no, I'm not. Actually, then why are you even a chronomancer? Okay, fine, forget that. Yeah, so like, it's useful. It's good. It's just you know, uh, that's that's a specific kind of build, and technically. That's a build that you can share if you if you actually do the elementalist because it's basically the double. Yeah, exactly. It's it's time time store plus fireball or technically also time walk. You can do the same thing. Mm-hmm. It just allows the people to move around, yep. which is not quite as good as time store. 
All right, so the last thing then uh, to wrap things up is, are there any schools that you feel like uh, you should wa uh, watch out for uh, natural enemies of the chronomancer? Oh, let's or, see. Or, or guys that have a slight edge, you could say. I don't think there's any school that is really weakened, especially because you, you share so many of your spells. Mm -hmm. But are there schools or, or archetypes that you that might have an issue? Uh, Chronomancer might have an issue with? I think someone who's going to telekinesis you and switch, or not telekinesis, transpose. You'd get really angry because your whole thing, if you ran up yes. there, you got it. Really quickly, yes. they're like, oh, thank you very much. He's now on my side. You're just like, oh. Yes. <laughs> that, I can see I if your opponents this, bring that. The illusionist. Scream. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the illusionist also not only has transpose, they also have really good shooting. They have a spell that, uh, that gives you plus three uh, mm -hmm. to shoot one guy. I think it's called, I forget what it's called. I, for some reason, I didn't put it down. Mm -hmm. Low. I did actually write it down. So that can also be bad for your units because even though they move fast, they, they're not necessarily like leap uh, getting out of line of sight when they move. So that can mm -hmm. be an issue. But again, if you take leap in those situations, you can use that, especially as also fog, which can, can help uh, reduce a lot of those shenanigans. And also illusionists can also take blinding light, which really yeah. screws over your nine move guy because then their move is reduced to one. Mm -hmm. Also, so. I can see another Chronomancer being really bad because now mm -hmm. you both just went all in running quickly and then you're just going to screw over your ability to move <laughs> away because all the other spells spells are good at screwing the ability to get away. Yeah. And at now least you've... if it's only two players, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's not that bad because you're both canceling out each other's advantages. I know, but you're you're not ahead. You're, you're, you've just been like countered. You're equal, yeah, but you've been time, countered. At the same time, if there's three people you're probably in trouble because then all of your guys get there at the same time and then you know a third guy can start throwing fireballs or grenades yeah and the guy who you grab treasure with now gets slowed down by the other chronomancer and the other guy just walks in there and starts killing everyone and your sad times yep all right the last one uh that i think you might have an issue with uh which is maybe less than the illusionist um is the enchanter um, hmm. because they have really good, they have two things. They, they have TK. Yes. And mm -hmm. that can just drag the treasure away. So, uh, so now and you're... then they also mm -hmm. have really good, they probably have the strongest melee in the game because they have both strength and enchant weapon and enchant armor. Mm -hmm. So if you get bogged down, they're going to beat you overall, especially because a lot of your stuff is moving around doing stuff. Uh, so those guys are the ones where you kind of want fireball and something like that, or push, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you can push them away or petrify or things like that, so that even though if they're TKing, you can still make it to the stuff, make it to the treasure, get it, and go away. So, yeah, and your whole yeah. plan of drawing them into your lines. Like if they're Enchanter, they may have buffed their guys up high enough. They don't care they had to run into your lines. They're like, oh, we're, we're fine with this. Yeah. We're on equal footing, even though they're, yeah. they've run into yours, your army. Yeah, that's why I like push. So, you know, if that happens, you just push them away. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so you can stop them from actually getting to you. So oftentimes a good trick for enchanters is to leap a guy within one inch. So if you try to move away, you get caught. But in that case, you can just push them back onto their side of the board. And then mm -hmm. you can run away again. So, yeah. All right. So I think... That is overall, we've gone through all the Chronomancer. I think we originally said we we're going to do two spells, but it's already been an hour, so we're obviously only going to do one per uh, episode. Yeah, future ones might be shorter, because we've had to like talk about concepts and like spells. Mm -hmm. Then again, people are just listening I to one episode. I don't think it's going to be less than no, 25 No, I don't, because I, I think people want to listen to the one episode about their wizard they want. They're going to want all the details, so we're going to do yeah. all the details. Yeah, we're obviously detail-oriented. We've gone through everything. And very opinionated. Uh, so hopefully that was really helpful uh, if you're trying to get in and uh -huh. trying to get an idea of what to use. Okay. Um, I guess so should, the last thing is... Should people use a Chronomancer? What what yes. tier do they fit into amongst the wizard classes? Yeah. The schools? All right. Do you want to say it at the same time? Sure. I'm going to count down. Yeah. Three, two, one. A. B.
Ooh. Uh, we've terrible at timing it together. <laughs> oh, it's because they probably made the delay of the of the stream. But yeah, you think it's an A, Justin? I would yep. say it's a B. Um, a lot of I really really like Time Store and Time Walk, and it definitely makes things interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I I would say I think Chrono Master is actually one of the like you can definitely create strong builds, and especially as time goes on, you know, mm -hmm. time store and time walk being your critical spells. The longer get the games go, the the stronger the chronomancer gets. Yeah. Um, which makes it, I feel like, it it gets closer and tighter the longer the games go. But especially at the beginning, you're having a little bit of uh, a tougher time than a lot of uh, other spells. Cause yeah. Just because your signature spells need to get reduced, right? Well, I think That's other schools even I think other schools even improve more as the game goes along than a Chronomancer would. So no, I can see. I don't know. I can see it. Mm -hmm. If you take Not time many, walk, but... you're literally mm -hmm. casting two spells a turn, like two spells every other turn. Yep. That by itself makes it like shoot up crazy. If you take the time walk variant mm -hmm. as opposed to time store. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I would rank it B. It's it's in the middle, so I get yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. It's a B. It's a middle would, school. Yeah, I don't think. I guess spoiler I don't think there are any C uh, schools. So I think really? B is basically saying I would put it. What you think there's a C school? We're gonna have to name some of the C schools. Well, we'll we can talk about it later. We'll try and see. Yeah, I would but... say Chrono Master is in the, in the bottom 50 percent. Still mm -hmm. very usable. Uh, still very good. And but like I said, the longer the games go, like in the more more mm -hmm. levels it has, I think the Chrono Master basically catches up. But again, just because of that hard going at the beginning, I was ready to be. Yeah, that's fair. All right. So that is lesson three, the Chronomancer. Uh, do you have anything else we want to talk about or just wrap it up? No, I'm just going through these spell lists. And I'm like, <laughs> maybe Chronomancer is at the bottom. I don't know. All these other ones are like, ooh. Don't get wrong. I will. Chronomancer is fun. It's got yeah. some great cool things, but like that's one of the testaments of Frostgrave, right? Like even mm -hmm. the people, the spell school at the bottom is still very fun, very usable. Mm -hmm. It's very competitive, right? Like I said, there's like, yeah, there's only yeah. two other schools that I'd be a little bit worried about, especially once you get to mid game. But yeah. Yeah. No, they might be on the bottom half. All right. Interesting. Just reading through all the spells. Yeah, considering ones. how strong Time Store and Time Walk are, right? Yeah. It's just what you do after that. You're like, okay, cool. I've got lots of activations, but the spells you do after that, like yeah. the Elemental Ball is good. But if you haven't leveled it up yet, that's why I'm saying you you gotta you gotta push it a little bit. You can also use push, yeah. But again, push it ends up being all spells, so it's like twelve, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just having that double cast. You you almost you really just need to reduce casting cost for the spell that you want to double up. Like mm -hmm. that's why I think it's. It's hard going at the beginning. Yeah, look, right. at the, look at the other spells, though. I don't know if they're as good at gathering treasure. And Frostgrave is all about gathering treasure. And Chrono Master's... XP for about, that, too. Pardon? You get XP for that, too. Exactly. And, like, the other casters I'm looking at, sure, they can, like, deliver a really bigger punch. But the mm -hmm. Chrono Master's, like, ability at just, like, yoink the treasure, they're, mm -hmm. they're way up there. So, I don't... It depends. That's not really yoink the treasure. It's getting your guys to the thing. There's other people who can yoink in some ways better, mm -hmm. but the ability for the Chronomancer just to get there first makes yeah. sense. It's the Time Wizard, right? Mm -hmm. So make use of time. even honestly, even Time Walk getting to cast two spells the first turn and just casting double uh, Fleet Feet, it's pretty strong, honestly. <laughs> That's yeah. probably the first what. As the first thing you're probably going to be doing is reducing your time store time walk. If you do time mm -hmm. walk, you're reducing it to 12 or 10, right? First three or four levels. Yep. And then that combo with casting double fleet feet first turn is a really strong starting, right? So once you get to level four, uh, maybe what's it? Like after four or five games, you know, mm -hmm. that's where the Chrono Master think starts, starts getting, you know, good. Yeah, so it sounds like if you're playing a Chrono Master, you don't want to like have a drag down knockout fight. You want to go in, you want to get out, you don't want like slow play this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think that, I think, with those final thoughts, kind of wraps things up. And we'll see, we'll revisit the Chronomancer, right? I've rated a B, you rated an A, uh, with a maybe it also being a B. 
uh, we'll once we go through all the wizards, uh, all the wizard schools, we'll revisit that. But uh, in the meantime, if you have uh, any specific questions about the Chronomancer, uh, just for us about anything about miniature games uh, or anything about Frostgrave, you can email us at contact at diceovereverything.com. Or find us on Facebook. We're Dice Over Everything. This has been Alan. Yeah, it's been Brandon. Bye.